find out a gas well or a compressor station or something else may come in your backyard. I'd like Rob to describe how he found out all the information he did about those 12 well pads he gave oil in the okay. Because I think a lot of people don't really know how to find out about those things. So if you could turn to that, please, how you found out all this stuff. That's great. Well, like I said, um, my, my words were in front of this, and they heard from somebody that there was some well pads on, you know, being said, And so I basically went up to the township and said, hey, I hear that there are some well pads that have been submitted as, you know, for, for permit. And I said, well, public information, here's the application. Make an appointment. I went in, I sat down with the township uh, supervisor and, and the zoning, and the zoning um, guy. And we laid out all the applications on the table. They said, well, what questions do you have? And I kind of went, uh, OK. That one. But it was more than that. I basically took a look at the ones that were near my house. And obviously, I've been reading about this for a while. So I kind of had some concerns about proximity and, and, and other things. But I just wanted to know where they were. And then I said to, to the gentleman, I was like, well, where do you go from here? He said, well, this is going to be a long process because we have to review all of these and make sure that they're correct in terms of you know, the right address, the right location, the map is right, and that they have the basic principles laid out. And then he said the first thing is got to go to the planning commission. The planning commission looks at them and interviews any representatives of you know, landowners or the gas company and says if they have questions. And then from the, land, from the planning commission, and then it goes to the township, um, to the board of supervisors, who basically says, OK, is this application complete? Is it correct? Does it mean anything? Um, if the application is complete and correct based on the laws that are out there, um, correct me if I'm not, but if it's complete and correct based on existing ordinances and any applicable federal and state and local <coughs> rules, then it can start moving forward. And what that means for me, living in a rural urban district or zone, that means that anybody who's an affected landowner and what they're doing is they're drawing a 2,000 foot ring around the well and, and basically mailing a letter to every landowner who's within a 2,000 foot radius of that particular property development process. And they're saying, okay, hey, we're going to have a hearing, a conditional use hearing on this project on such and such a night. And that'll be a point for the public. Anybody, I mean, most of the landowners are affected. Anybody else who knows or something like this is, hey, we got to do this meeting. Guilty as charged. But um, we go to the meeting and we um, basically provide input and ask questions. And hopefully come up with some kind of salute, some kind of end result that best matches both the interests of the property owner, the environment, and the community members. So we all know that's kind of like one of those levels like you know, the wall. There's a lot of tough compromises that have to be made. But basically, I just called the township and said, hey, I heard that there's a bunch of applications on the file. Can I come look at them? They said, sure, come on in. And I have to compliment the township has done a really good job of being transparent and showing me everything that they have and, and letting me ask lots of questions. And, um, and they, they sent me copies of their ordinance that regulates oil and gas activity based on the different um, zoning classifications and stuff. And that's really what I mean. I, I just said, hey, when's the next meeting? What are we going to talk about? And I've learned that I've gotten to know some of our supervisors, and I've been sharing with them some of my research, as well as they've been sharing with me some of the process. So it's been a good partnership so far. Um, you know, I have high hopes that we'll continue to be a partnership, and we'll see where it goes. Great, thanks, Mike. Yeah. Um, I'm Mark Shoes. I'm a lawyer for Penn Future, and I'm the board of RDA. Uh, I live in Wilkes-Barre right now. Uh, actually, wasn't intending to wear a suit tonight, even though I'm a lawyer. Uh, I wore jeans to work today. And coming from Wilkes-Barre, I, I grabbed uh, a little better clothes. I grabbed this, some slacks and a shirt and a sport coat. And then I got to Williamsport, and the hanger that the pants had been on was empty. So at some point, those pants fell. So this is my, actually my bag. Um, <laughs> but uh, I wanted to, uh, Barb's presentation and Rob's presentation gave a really, really good overview of sort of impacts and activities that gas development can involve. It is heavy industrial activity, which makes it different from the gas boom that's been happening in Pennsylvania since the 1860s. The first commercial oil well in the world was drilled in western Pennsylvania in the 1860s. In 
Pennsylvania has had commercial gas drilling and oil drilling ever since. Um, but we didn't have this kind. When this all started, uh, unconventional gas drilling started about 10 years ago. We had an oil and gas law on the books in 1978 or 1984. I was on a presentation with a DEP lawyer a couple of years ago, and he said that trying to regulate this new kind of gas development with that old law was like trying to build Corvettes on a line designed for Model Ts. So, in the most general sense, Pennsylvania went into this new kind of gas development with what I'd call a false sense of security. We've been doing it forever, and we thought we could continue to do it using these old, antiquated laws. We've been basically paying catch up since. A lot of things have gotten better. A lot of things still have not gotten better. Um, and, and, you know, both, both Rob and Barb talk about the variety of impacts that you can see on water, on air quality. Uh, and I deal with those in a lot of contexts of what I do. Uh, I have various litigation going on right now concerning those aspects. But what I'd like to talk to you tonight is about zoning. Um, how many people here are from Boyle's Hot Township tonight? Okay, how many from Elgin? How many from Tepper? How many from Fair Upper Fairfield? Now I ask because those are the, are the townships that are kind of in the crosshairs for Inflection. Inflection is the company that is proposing a lot of wells in these various areas. Um, uh, as Rob noted, there are 12 well pads currently planned for Royal South Township. There's one well pad permit that's been issued, the Griggs pad. That's been appealed, um, and, and, uh, but, but I'll kind of back up and talk about zoning more generally. Uh, if you live in Lake County County, and it's probably a good place, you live in Lake County County that has a zoning ordinance. And zoning ordinance are basically municipal laws that divide the land up into different zones and land districts and decide what kind of uses of land are allowed in those districts. We have 52 municipalities in Lake County County. 20 of those municipalities do not have their own zoning ordinance. They're zoned under a Lake County County ordinance that basically is administered by the county and it determines what land uses are possible there and what districts. 32 municipalities do have their own zoning districts. And I think all of the municipalities we just mentioned, Hepburn, uh, Eldred, Loyalsock, Fairfield, and Upper Fairfield Townships, all five of those townships have their own zoning ordinance. If, if don't take any, away anything else about zoning, I want you to kind of remember three basic principles. The first is that as a general rule, municipalities have to allow within their borders every legal use of land. Gas drilling is a legal use of land in Pennsylvania. So all things being equal, municipalities have to allow gas development and other related activities, such as compressor stations and pipelines and other related uses somewhere within the municipality. That's number one. Principle number two is a kind of qualification of principle number one. And that is that within certain constraints, municipalities have the power to say where within their borders gas development activities go. Now, it's been very complicated with oil and gas activities in the past few years. In 2009, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court decided a couple of cases that tested the boundaries of municipal zoning and gas development. They were both in western Pennsylvania. It was before we had much activity out here. But basically what the court said in 2009 is that, in the simplest terms, municipalities can't regulate how gas drilling is done, can't regulate the technical aspects of it, can't say, you know, how, you know, what kind of fluids you can use and, uh, you know, erosion sediment control and how you store the chemicals and things like that. But municipalities do have the power to say, again, where within their borders gas development activities go. It's basically a distinction of how versus where. Municipalities can't say how it's done, but they can say where it's done. In 2013, Pennsylvania, or 2012, Pennsylvania passed a law called Act 13. How many people have heard of Act 13? It is the, the, the law that updated that old 1984 gas development law to try to bring it into the 21st century. And it was a big improvement on the old law in many ways. In one particular way, it was not an improvement at all. 
And that is that that law, Act 13, said all municipalities have to have reasonable zoning for oil and gas activities. Then the law went a step further, and it said, here's what the laws have to do to be reasonable. And it basically said municipalities have to allow gas development activities pretty much everywhere within their borders, with certain limitations, but it was a very expansive uh, notion of where gas development activities can be allowed. That part of the law had been struck down. Uh, there was a 2000, uh, just in January of 2013, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court decided a case called Robinson Township versus Common. That decision of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court cut out that kind of one size fits all zoning approach uh, and did so basically on the basis of Article 1, Section 20 of the Pennsylvania Environmental Rights Amendment, which Barb mentioned in her presentation. I'll come back to that. The third zoning principle, and this comes back to Article 1, Section 27, is that when municipalities make decisions about where gas development activities go, they have a legal duty to make sure that those activities are compatible to other uses within those zoning districts. And they have an obligation to make sure that they're not allowing activities in such a way that it violates citizens' rights under Article 1, Section 27 of the Pennsylvania Constitution. Barb showed it on a slide over here, and I'm going to read the whole thing again to you because it's very important. The amendment was passed in 1972. It says, the people have a right to clean air, pure water, and to the preservation of the natural, scenic, historic, and aesthetic values of the environment. Pennsylvania's public natural resources are the common property of all the people, including generations yet to come. As trustee of these resources, the Commonwealth shall conserve and maintain them for the benefit of all. Now, this, this decision speaks of the Commonwealth, but that obligation, the obligation of government, essentially, to protect citizens' environmental rights, applies to all Pennsylvania government, including municipalities. How many people have heard of the Fairfield Township decision in my county? This was a case in Fairfield Township where uh, George Ugovic and I, uh, on behalf of Penn Future, represented some landowners uh, in, in I think the development's called the Pines. And uh, Inflection, same company, had applied for a conditional use permit to put a gas well, essentially in the, the little hollow that's beneath this housing development. Uh, the way Fairfield Township's ordinance is set up, it doesn't specifically provide for gas development activities because it, uh, it was passed in 2008, just, just when all this was getting started. So they hadn't been really public. But uh, what it says is that if the ordinance doesn't specifically provide for any use, it'll be treated as a conditional use, meaning that it's permitted, but only if the company shows it's satisfying certain conditions. Uh, we are, <coughs> excuse me, the township supervisors granted the conditional use permit. We appealed to the Lycoming County Court of Common Pleas and argued basically that the company hadn't demonstrated that it could satisfy those conditions and that gas drilling in this area was not a use that was similar to and compatible with the other uses, namely residences, homes, farms, and other uses in the agricultural residential district. Um, Judge, Judge Lovecchio wrote a very good decision, which has been appealed, and we're expecting tomorrow to find out what the basis of the inflections appeal is. But he mentioned the Robinson Township decision in Article 1, Section 27. And uh, and that decision kind of makes clear that municipalities have an obligation, just as the Commonwealth does, just as the state does, to, to take into account environmental effects in making land use decisions, in determining where these activities can go, and in reviewing permits, zoning permit applications in their, in their districts. And I said there were three things that I wanted you to take home about tonight, but there's actually a fourth thing, and Rob touched on this, and it probably is the most important that as citizens of the municipality where you live, you can participate in zoning decisions. You can find out information, you can call your supervisors, you can call the planning department, you can call the township zoning officer, you can find out what applications have been filed, you can find out where they're planning to be held, and then when uh, the township supervisors or the zoning hearing board or whatever body it is that considers the application considers it, you can go to the hearing, you can speak about your concerns, you can ask questions, 
you can press up against the company's application to try to expose problems with it. And based on what we've seen so far, there will be problems with the applications these companies file. Rob mentioned that these 12 applications in Royal South Township, as initially filed, were rejected because they weren't put together with enough information but to give the supervisors a real basis to decide whether they could allow this at all. In the Fairfield Township decision, that kind of citizen engagement is what enabled us to win the, the appeal to the Court of Common Pleas. Uh, Harvey Katz, who's with us today, is a resident of Fairfield Township. He went through inflections applications very carefully. He asked a lot of really smart, good questions that exposed a lot of the problems with them. Dawn Gorsley, who was one of the plaintiffs in the, in the lawsuit, did the same thing. She asked a lot of questions. Basically, you had citizens cross-examining the representatives of the gas companies and exposing a lot of the flaws in their presentation. Now, it's better when you do that to have a lawyer, because lawyers know kind of how the system works. They know, you know how to cross-examine people. But you can make a big difference just by staying engaged, by looking at what's been filed, and by asking questions. You can also testify on your own behalf. It's very important to local government officials to know what your concerns are, to know how close you are to the proposed welfare, to know if you have respiratory issues that could be exacerbated by a gas well or a compressor station that's literally or almost literally in the backyard. The, the reason that citizen engagement is so important in, on the township level before your township supervisors is that, as a rule, that's where the facts are developed in these kinds of cases. If you, if you talk to lawyers about land use proceedings, at some point you'll hear them speak about a thing called a 